guys, thank you for joining us. Tom, we'll start with you. As we know, Wagman United assumed control of the club yesterday. An exciting time for everybody involved. Yeah, massively exciting. Um, it's been quite a long process in, in getting the deal done, but yeah, glad that it finally has been done and now we can sort of get to work in, in the future of, of Crawley Town Football Club. Yeah, as we know, the fans have had their questions, certainly some about the finances, and I believe you've got a little bit more to sort of adapt and, you know, add some more information on it. Yeah, I think, you know, as with whenever there's Whenever there's change, there's always a lot of misinformation, rumours. Um, but look, at the end of the day, these guys are winners. They want to come in. They want to win games of football, and they want to have fun as well. You know, that's what we're all here for. At the end of the day, is football is an entertainment sport. We want people to be able to come to the ground, watch exciting football, have things at the ground that you know mean people want to come back, and just make it a more a more enjoyable place to be. You know, there's a lot of good people at this club, uh, and if we can build on that. Um, maybe get some more resources into what we've already been traditionally doing anyway um, and then look to build, obviously tapping into the digital side of things then I think that's only positive for, for not only Crawley as a club but you know the local community and, and everyone involved really. Yeah, Gaffer, you've had the chance to meet the new owners, they were here for the Swindon game. What were your first impressions when you met them? Um, well we, we met them before that. Mm. And listen, they're, they're enthusiastic people um, they want to do well for the football club. It's a bit like anything when you get new people come in. It's the fear factor because you don't know what to expect. Sometimes you turn that in to the positives. You know, I'm glad we are a little bit fearful because they haven't come in like your bog standard, giving you all the uh, the old cliches coming out. They just need to have a go. They've got to learn to stop calling it soccer, <laughs> and then we'll all be all right. But no, that's little things. No, they're good people. You know, they're honest people. They seem honest people, which they are. Um, yeah, it's, it's just exciting times. Yeah, as you say, exciting times, but I'm sure your focus is still on winning the remaining seven league fixtures that we got this season. No, I don't care nothing about <laughs> that now. Of course it is. It's all about winning games, because without winning the games, they wouldn't be here, would they? Let's not dress it up. They're all here. We're all under the... We've all been waiting for a long time to see how far we can go. There's fans, everybody else. Um, but, well, now's the time. If we, It's the old saying, but I wasn't going to swear. I was going to swear then. But there's the old saying about it now, if, if, you know, if you don't want to, on the pot, get off of it. It's simple. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to start producing now. We have been producing, you know. It's, you know, when we met the lads and that, there's nothing doing anything different than what we've been doing. It's just, it's nice now that you, you're going to hopefully get recognised a little bit more and be able to do a little bit more on the football side. Observer, I'm happy to hand over. Uh, yeah, Tom, uh, how difficult has it been getting this deal over the line? I imagine it's not been easy due to time zones and being on different continents and things like that. Yeah, as you say, with, with the time zones, it's been difficult. But I mean, equally, you know, everyone's everyone's wanted to get the deal done. So, you know, you, you learn to work around that. Um, but yeah, the, the last the last couple of months have been difficult from whereby, you know, you're sort of in this state of limbo. Um, but as I said earlier, you know, it's great to now be in a position where, you know, as John said, we want to finish the season as strongly as we can on the field um, and then yeah we're, we're in a position where we can sort of take stock where we're at over the summer look to build and you know these ambitions that we've got you know as the ownership group have, have been keen to keen to say you know hopefully we'll be able to show people what we want to do um, and yeah that'll be that'll be starting from now. Uh, what will the owners level of involvement be between now and the rest of the season are you expecting them to be more hands on the next campaign or are they willing to get stuck in right away? Yeah, looking to get stuck in right away. As John mentioned, you know, we've, we've had conversations um, on the field, off the field about plans. Um, and as I said, those, you know, now that the deal's done, we'll be, we'll be able to crack on with those plans. Um, they'll be over towards the end of the month. So again, that will allow for some more meetings with, with all the relevant stakeholders, um, internally, externally. Um, but yeah, you know, we've, myself and John are in almost constant dialogue with them. Um, they're really keen to get over as soon as they can. Obviously, it's just it's still a bit difficult travel-wise at the moment. Um, but yeah, really hands-on, really passionate, really excited about being here, um, and just yeah, can't wait to get going. Really. Uh, Crawley Town are the first football league club to be owned by a cryptocurrency group. Does this show how progressive Crawley are as a club? Um, I think yeah, I think you're right. I think there's you know we, we've long said that Crawley have had to maybe do things differently to other clubs in the past to to get where we're at. Um, so I think you know a, a move like this can only be good, again, not only for the club but for the community. Um, and yeah, if we can be be trailblazers and maybe buck the trend, then you know I'm all for that. Um, you know I think I'm keen to say that whilst there isn't maybe a new way of thinking coming, um, we're not going to be moving away from the fact that 
you know, football is for the fans, um, whether that be locally, internationally, you know, wherever. Um, you know, John's been around West Sussex football for you know longer than I've been alive. I've been at the club for the last six years or so. Everyone at this club knows what it means to everyone. Um, so you know, if, if it's a case of we can make that club that everyone knows and loves that little bit better, whilst also enticing a new audience, then you know, I only see that as a good thing, really. Mm. Um, and finally, the owners have said that if Crawley aren't promoted in two years, they'll let the fans vote on who will be um, the next board of directors. And I don't think I've seen that level of transparency before anywhere at board level. Um, does this mark a new era, not just for Crawley, but for football in general? I think it can do. As, as you say, I think certainly I would agree with you. I haven't really seen that anywhere else in football. Um, but I think that, that shows to the fans just, you know, that that's, that's the owners sitting there holding their hands up saying, look, we've got some ideas. We want to work with you guys. Um, you know, fundamentally, we all want the same thing. Um, you know, we want Crawley Town Football Club competing at the highest possible level with as many fans here at the stadium as possible and following the club. Um, again, the fact that they're, they're going to be sitting there being held accountable to it, I think that's brilliant and I think more clubs should be like that. Brilliant. Thank you, Tom. Thank no you problem. Much. John, uh, how involved kind of were you in, in the process of it? And if you were, kind of, would you want board straight away with it? Um, uh, to be fair, I didn't know nothing about it. Um, having spent a lot of time myself out in the States back in the day, I know how um, a lot of things work out in America. Um, and, and listen, uh, when you talk about crypto, I thought that's something that I thought that, to be honest with you, is the stuff that kills Superman, to be honest with you. I ain't got a clue about it. So when it comes in, but then how many people in football do know what their owners do or where they get their money from? Um, you just judge people by good people. If you're a good person, you're a good person. If you're, if you ain't, well, <laughs> don't matter where you get your money or what you do, you're not a nice person. These seem very good people. They're honest people. They want to be successful, which is, you know, seems to be the the thing at the moment. And uh, we all want to be successful. You know, we've had a bit of changed it around a little bit here over the last two and a half years. So, who's to say where we can go? Is the ambition at all quite exciting for you? It, I'm always excited about ambition. You're in football. My ambition was to get promoted this year. My ambition was to get promoted the year before. My, ever since you was the age of 10, you wanted to win the World Cup and you do what you've got to do. So you, you don't lose that drive. And sometimes you will be able to fulfil your ambitions. Um, let, let's see where we go with them. You know, sometimes, obviously, we got to, it will be a little bit pulling each other's reins in, I think. Um, I think... I think well, I know that if, if we do it correctly, you're going to get one chance to do it. But I say to all the fans, and don't be frightened of it. It's all new to me. I couldn't tell you a crypto coin from a bleeding, you know. I don't know. I've got a clue. But once again, that ain't my prerogative to know where people get do for a living to bring the business in. Uh, so they mentioned about uh, their plans for promotion kind of, uh, in the next couple of years. Have they outlined, uh, outlined any more ambitions? Um, yeah, uh, we're all off to Florida in the summer on a pre-season tour. Uh, we've entered the America's Cup yachting race. We're going to a rodeo and I'm going to be the chief cowboy on the, on the horse. No, <laughs> no. All we've got to do is just, you know, we're, we're grow. We're grow. They've got to learn about football, not soccer, as I keep saying, football. Um, but listen, they're, they're willing to learn. They're not, they're, you don't get the sort of wealth and, and, the, and the business acronym they got for being stupid, do you? So obviously we got to quell each other's ambitions. Let's hope they can match my ambition. It's a two-way street. And the uh, the players in the in the change room are they excited about this as well? I think everybody is. You talk to people in football. You know, like I say, there's no negative. Sometimes I've just said it before. If if you're worried, you get worried about some things, like computers and and what they call it, the a and analytics and all this. Like I'm using words that I got a clue. Why? Because I'm illiterate that you don't know nothing about it, so you get frightened of it. Well, there's nothing to be frightened of. As I said to you, the new owners coming in the football club, they've got to match our ambitions. They've got to match my ambitions. So it's a two-way street. Um, you know, we're judged now. But then you're judged every week when the crowd come through. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Yeah, thanks for having me today. Um, I'm interested with these NFTs that you're planning on issuing on the club. How much are you planning to raise because the guys on the podcast say they're planning on increasing the wage bill by two million from one point three to which is pretty a lot in the space of a year. So how, is that money that you're trying to raise through the NFTs or will that is that money the owners will put in? What's an NFT? <laughs> it's uh, basically it's a type of crypto token 
Uh, well, for, it's not my question. Obviously, Tom yeah. knows about that. I ain't got a clue. I think uh, uh, over the course of the next coming weeks, and obviously, you know, when when the ownership group are over at the end of May, you know, that as as John said, that's that's their side of the business model. Um, so they'll be able to convey that in in a lot more detail. Um, I think what is important to to note is that, you know, the world of crypto, Web three, whatever, that's not all of a sudden going to be forced on on Crawley Town fans. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know we, we've got all of our traditional streams of revenue: your ticket sales, your hospitality, your commercial, all of that sort of thing. Um, that group, have, you know, want to provide the club, the team, with the resources to push those on, which in turn will make it more enjoyable for all the fans coming locally. Um, and equally, if we've got this additional revenue stream on the side of again NFTs, crypto, you know, again, it's only a benefit for the club and, and only a positive. So about sort of four or five months ago, all this stuff was booming, but recently the kind of NFT market has kind of crashed pretty dramatically. And you've seen Liverpool tried to issue their NFT collection recently and only sold seven thousand out of one hundred eighty thousand. So they tried yeah. to raise loads of money through this and that, but and that was Liverpool. So mm. is there a concern that people won't buy these things? Essentially, that you've kind of missed the peak. I mean, it might well come back up, and then I'll look stupid. But is there a chance that you know this all this hype has come around and it's it's over basically with NFTs and, and they won't be able to raise money? I think it's only just getting started, really. I understand what you're saying. I think it's like anything, isn't there? There's, there's peaks and troughs. Um, but again, you know, the, the, the initial statements that we've seen and, and the releases is, is, is honestly really just scraping scraping the top of what is a really, you know, the guys that are involved in this, there's some, you know, intelligent people that go far beyond the crypto world, entertainment, you know, it, it's a positive group. Um, but again, as I say, you know, in the coming weeks and months, I'm sure the guys will be over and, and they'll be able to explain in, in a lot more detail than I can their, their, their plans for that side of things. And just another question we've got on, on the wages. So the, the league rules, obviously there's no salary cap, but the league rules are 50% of revenue, right, with this. Mm -hmm. So if you want to up the wage bill to 3.3 .3 million, you need 6 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. So would that come from... Up the wages to what? 3.3 3. They're, they're, they're said in the podcast they want to up the wage bill from the current 1.3 million by 2 million, so which would be 3.3. .3. In what time scale? Well, I guess in, in pretty much immediately if, they, if they're going to be voted out. I think they said. In, I think they said in the podcast that that was what they've been recommended would make us competitive in inverted commas. I yeah. don't think none of that's been been set in stone as yet. I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I think you know there's conversations like that. But now that we've we've done the deal, we can now sit and you know have those conversations a bit more depth rather than it being hypothetical. But yeah. I guess a question for you, John. If you don't mind, you say you're, this crypto world is new to you, but what about the players? Are many of them? into it because certainly yeah a couple, couple of them are into it my boy's into it right. so I know that there'll be a few phone calls flying around um, but I'm still one of them if someone up with me a coin with a rabbit with one ear I'll want it or five grand I'll take the five grand but you know that's the, where I'm from might turn into 50 grand if you hold on to it could do I'll take the coin with, a with one ear yeah. <laughs> but then if I put the five grand on a ten to one shot it still might but <laughs> listen I'm, I'm one of them it, it, it's you know it if you would have said years ago, you know, you've only got to look at the world at the minute with how things are going up, the gas, the electric, the this, the that, the other. A lot of clubs will be, you know, looking for extra incomes and this, that and the other. And a lot of people get their money that we don't know how some people get their money. Um, so uh, I think, you know, everybody's got to be looking tight in their belts, whether it's crypto, gas, electric. You can only see what's happened at Chelsea and things like that, you know. So everybody, you're only as good as your next game, aren't you? Cool. Tim? Hi guys, thanks. Uh, Tom, a, a close statement, a tribute to what Zaire Aaron had done during COVID, you know, trying to help the club through. You played a massive role in that. You were working day and night. You so was I. Trying to keep the club going as well on, on a day-to-day -day basis. That shows how much you care about the club. Have you, are you at, how much have you personally asked to see the EFL get, you know, fit the proper person's test on these owners. How much due diligence have you personally, you know, on behalf of the fans, everyone else involved, and John beside you, you know, to make sure that this is as sure as it can be for you? Because I know how much you care about them. Yeah, no, of course. I think, you know, a lot's been made of, you know, that the term owners of clubs to me is always interesting. Um, you know, we look at it more so as probably custodians. Um, as I said earlier, football is for the fans, it's the fans' clubs. Um, so, yeah, you know, we've obviously wanted to make sure that we're putting the best possible sort of, uh, sort of processes in place, so to speak. 
Um, but again, you know, as John said, you judge people lot by being people. Uh, all the conversations we've had again have been have been really positive. Um, and as I say, yeah, I think it's it's just an exciting time to be a to be a Crawley fan. Yeah, they, they, they've given you every assurance of how their business model is going to work. But you've, you've really looked into this. And have you had the support from outside bodies on this? Because there's some skepticism in there, which yeah. I'm sure you can understand. No, of course, we wouldn't be sat here today having it with it all confirmed had that been any different. Um, again, you know, there's been a lot, a lot's made of models in football. Um, you know, we obviously had the the transfer model, I suppose, in place under the last ownership. Um, so again. This is it's a different model. Um, we're all really excited about how it's going to play out, and and yeah, hopefully, as I say, we'll, we'll be able to show people rather than rather than just talk about it. John, you've been involved in the game a long time. You've met good, bad, and different owners. What do you, as a football manager, want from an owner? What's important to you about that relationship? And uh, presumably, you're seeing it from from, from the new group. Um, one, not to be full of. One, not to tell lies, um, follow through what they're going to do, and most importantly, you'll make sure that you don't try and con the fans and the players, because at the front, you know, we're the front of house of everything. Because uh, sometimes people forget everything revolves around what goes out there on a Saturday afternoon. The 90 minutes of football gets in the way of everything else, whether it's bitcoins, gas, Coca Cola, whatever it is. The 90 minutes get involved, so let's just hope, and I, I know they will, and I trust that they will, back of what we're doing on the football side. Tom, there have been issues mentioned about Liverpool, John Terry, certain people trying this new currency out and it, and it not going so well so far. Would you say to fans, do you, do you think this is an early an early world? Do you, have you got any worries about that? Um, yes, yeah, as I said earlier, I think you know we're only really just at the start of it. But equally, you know, I think that there's been a lot of misinformation in terms of sort of maybe ha the, the role crypto is going to play in terms of the funding. Um, you know, as I've said, every club has got their traditional revenue streams. Other clubs have got different ideas for additional revenue streams, and this is ours. Um, you know, there was rumours of how much Bitcoin have they paid for the club. The club hasn't been bought with a cryptocurrency. It's you know hard cash. Um, rumours like that. So you know, I think it's that there's a lot of misinformation. But now that we're again, now that we're, the deal's been done. We can, uh, we can hope to start to come out the other side in a, in a positive light. The new owners may want to tell us more in May when they come over, but, but I mean, in essence, owners are owners. Have they, is there any debt? Have they paid that off? Is the club near now in the black? Are you, you know, has John Jens and, and the squad been given some money as yet, or will that be next season? Can you tell the fans any sort of you know, rudimentary basics like that? You know, is your budget being doubled? You know, any, tell us as yet about how things might be rosier than they have been in the last few years yeah sure I mean again you know we've had those conversations that was obviously part of the part of the deal and that was obviously intertwined um, in terms of you know there's nothing that we can come out and sit has been set in stone at the moment you know that's the conversations that as John said we've still got seven games left this season um, so let's make sure we finish as, as well as we can this year um, and then start to have those conversations about next year to make sure that we're we're ready to go at the end of July, um, because yeah, it seems like this season's starting earlier and earlier and earlier. So yeah, the sooner we can start having those conversations, the the better. For you, John, you've been through a lot. You've, you've had to put up with a lot in a number of jobs at, at times in this one. Are you? Do you feel in a good place now? Is this exciting for you and, and the squad? It sounds like an exciting future if it all comes off. Yeah, it is. It's only when you get miserable gits like yourself, keep doubting everything, Tim, and asking silly questions. Because there's questions we don't know the answers to, and I don't mean that disrespectful to you, because it's your right to answer them questions. But as a football club, if we can't all look forward to what's around the corner, then we might as well all just sell the kit and go and have a drink, because it, it, it's the world now. It's, it's the world. You see some people getting involved in sport, that we say, and you know, from the gambling companies to everything else. Everybody wants to have a moan up when you're trying something new. Well. All I can assure the fans is the players will be trying, I'll be trying, everyone at this club that puts a shirt on will be trying, and let's, you know, let the games commence, so to speak. And on the fans, John and, and Tom, I'll ask John first. Um, Jonathan Chappell from, from, from the podcast will say he expects quite a big crowd tomorrow to, you know, to, to show the new owners what, 
what is there with the fan base? Because they have been integral over what's been a very exciting 20 year journey, haven't they, John? Yeah, yeah, as I said, the fans have always been good. Um, uh, we've had, you know, they've had to put up with quite a bit in the past. It's, it's crazy that they've had the best result, in my opinion, in the club's history. They've sold a player for a million pounds since we've been here, this, that and the other, and I don't think the fans have got the chance to see it. Um, you know, you beat Leeds 3-0, that would have been shown around more times than the episode of Coronation Street, you know. But we haven't been able to do that because the fans weren't here. Once again, with the fans with Max, you know, you sell a player for a million pounds and the fans never got a chance to see him. It's uh, crazy, but that's the world, you know, and I think if half of them ran him over in the middle of Crawley High Street, one wouldn't know who Max is. But if they would have been able to watch him, so we've come through a lot of adversity here, and we've come through a lot of it, you know, me, Tom and Claire in the summer, we were stuck here like a little house on the prairie sometimes, wondering what was going on and what was, you know, and once again, the fans are there to back everything. It's their club, keep saying that. It's their club, it's the fans' club. Well, these people understand that and they want to make it the best they can do. So, you know, let's hope the team will be behind it. As I said to you, we'll be doing our best to do what we can do. Let's hope the f You've got to give the fans something to cheer about. I keep saying that to you. Um, Barra's not going to be an easy game, by the way. Don't think they're going to come down here and suddenly think it's going to be like a cowboy and Indian film, because it ain't. It's going to be, you know, we've got to work ourselves twice as hard because they're fighting for relegation. So, uh, and Tom Farnier, the fans tomorrow, they can make a statement, they can turn up in numbers and, and, and show the new owners. Yeah, they can. I, I don't think they need to, to show the owners anything. Again, the the, the group are all sports fans. Um, they know what Crawley's about. They've been to games. They've been watching games online. Um, but, yeah, just, just echoing what John said, you know, especially over, especially over these last couple of years with the pandemic, you know, the, the, the support from, from everyone involved with the club, um, fans, sponsors who, you know, as John said, have been with the club through, through thick, thick and thin. Um, the financial support from the sponsors, the social support from the fans in backing everything, everything we've done to, to frankly keep the club going over the last couple of years has been amazing. Um, and as I say, you know, it, it's a really positive step that no, hopefully now we can sit and, and build and, and start to, to pay people back for that, for that support. The only thing I will thank you, thank you for your time. The only thing I will say about it all, it, uh, all I'm saying to the players and to myself and to me, Lewis, the staff that we're going to have working here, the hard work begins now. It's not that these have come in, the Americans or whoever they are, come in and give you a load of money to sit on your jacks here all the time. We've now got to get off and start working twice as hard now because it's, you know what, I've, I've been lucky enough where I've been before and had success. It's even harder to stay up there. Trust me. So we've all got to pot, we've all got to step up our game now by 100 percent, and the fans will see that, and the fans will be privileged to see that hopefully the teams that we're doing. But don't think it's going to be an easy ride. It's going to be an enjoyable one. But if everyone thinks we're just going to sit back and you know all turn up in covered wagons and all that sort of thing, it's not. It's not a gimmick. It's, it's we're at work. We want to make it work. You're not turning up in a covered wagon. No, no. I've got. Um, um, <laughs> I've got a stagecoach because, you know, I do live in a mall as well. Extra money on the way here, Tim. <laughs> See you at that dress on, John. Oh, oh, you play your games, Tim. I'll play mine. You know what I mean? <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Tim. Ciao, mate.